I'm delighted to tell you that this morning we're going to try and make it as interactive as possible. We've got some polls and we've got an opportunity for Q&A at the end. And I'm delighted to say my daughter, Grace, who you may be able to see on camera, uh, is running the web, and morning, Grace, that she's going to be running the polls for us this morning, all the technicalities, because I'm a classic man and I can't multitask. So if I tried to do that as well, it would all fall over. So good morning, everybody. We are at 10 o'clock exactly. So I'm not going to punish the punctual. We are going to make a start. So good morning, everybody. I will ask you to keep on mute for the majority of the webinar. And then at the end, when we go to Q&A, if you want to unmute and start asking any questions, you are very welcome to do so. There may be a few people joining us late, but everybody joins on mute, so we'll be okay. So, thank you very much, first of all, for joining us today. I know that many of you will be working remotely at the moment, and this is a really key topic that I'm working on with many clients. So my, my intention this morning is to walk you through mastering remote sales and influence. How do you do that in a remote environment? It's more difficult. So by the end of this webinar, you will know how to confidently remotely sell and influence. So you'll know how to do it. You'll know how to use powerful principles to engage your clients and potentially for your clients to use on their clients or patients if you're in a healthcare setting. You will learn how to deeply connect with people in a virtual environment. It's not easy, but it is possible. And you'll look at how you can expertly manage a remote meeting because that's really important to give you the confidence to manage those remote meetings. And finally, we'll look at how we keep control of the sales process as we go through this remote selling journey with our customers. We'll have questions and answers at the end. So during the course of the webinar, if anything comes up, if I say anything and you think I need to understand that or we've missed a topic, just drop your comments or questions into the chat box, which you'll find on the side. And my daughter, Grace, is going to be making a note of those throughout the webinar. And then at the end, we'll return to them and cover all of your questions or as many of the questions as we can before 11. Because my other commitment to you is we will finish at 11. We won't go a minute over. So, and the other thing we're going to do at the end, we're going to do a quick webcam gallery view photo. So you don't have to put your webcams on now. You can if you want to. It's wonderful to see so many familiar faces. And if you, uh, at the end, I'll remind you, just pop all the webcams on and we'll take a photo. So you've got about 55 minutes to get prepared for that photograph at the end. <laughs> and I've got a couple of things that I've been doing in the background that are promotions for, uh, if you want to go deeper on this subject. So I've got some stuff I'll share with you at the end. So there's a, a one-time offer today for anybody attending as well. And if you registered on the webinar, so if you received the email update or reminder a couple of days ago, then you will automatically receive the link to the recording and the slides. So I'm going to send you that regardless. If you're here through another means, if you haven't registered, drop a note with your email into the chat box and I'll make sure you get a copy of the slides. Okay, so we are ready to go. Let's get started. So most of you will know me, I'm sure, but if you don't know me, um, I'm Justin Lee. I live in Cambridgeshire, which is about 45 minutes on the train north of London, uh, and I'm an executive coach. I live here with my family, my wife, Katie, my daughter, Grace, who you've already met, who is helping us with the technical uh, challenges, or not today, and my son, Robbie. And we used to have our dog, George. Unfortunately, George um, passed away three weeks ago, but I didn't have the heart to move him out of the picture so uh, just put a little halo above George and I firmly believe that you can do anything as long as you have the passion the drive the focus and the support many of you on this webinar will also know that for yourselves and partly it's about continually growing and developing your skills so I kind of take my hat off to you for being here to listen to what we'll cover today that even if you don't get all of the topics there'll be two or three key things that will be really important for you to integrate into the way you work in the future so i hope you've got notepads and, and or ipads at the ready just to capture what's really working for you my background is sales sales leadership and business leadership so i've done that for over 25 years <laughs> It really doesn't feel like that long, but it, but it has been. So let's, you know a little bit about me. Let's learn a bit about you. So Grace is going to put up our first poll of the webinar, the first poll this morning. So, so all you need to do is click on the, the one of these that best 
describes you. So are you a business owner, a business leader or manager, sales leader, high performing sales person? Do you want to be a high performing sales person? And I put a not sure option in there, but I hope that's uh, not going to be relevant for most of you. So just drop in what you are. And we'll just see what our mix of audience is like this morning. It'll give you an idea of who we've got on the call. Uh, and we'll give that a couple of minutes. Hopefully you, you can all see that. You've all had the chance to hit an option. And when Grace is ready, she will reveal the poll to us. All eyes are on you, Grace. That's why you've turned your camera off. Ah, here we go. So, right, great mix we've got. Nobody is not sure. I'm delighted about that. We've got 6% of our audience are business owners, 6% are business leaders or managers, 17% are sales leaders, 31% are high performing salespeople. Brilliant. And 40% are aspirational. You want to be a high performing salesperson. Perfect. Thank you all very much for that. That's great. So we know who our audience is today. Let me teach you something about selling that you may know intuitively, but here's what the evidence shows us. The first piece of evidence is that 80% of sales that you generate need five follow-up calls after a meeting to gain the commitment you need from that client. 80% of sales. 44% of salespeople give up after one call or one follow-up. Now, this is absolutely critical. If you're not following up with people on a regular basis up to five times, then you're missing a series of opportunities. And I would say, you know, my advice to clients isn't go for five times, it's go until you get an answer. Keep following up until you get a response. You don't stop until you get some form of response. The other thing that's really interesting, many of you may know this, but, but it is seven times more expensive to acquire new clients than it is to retain current clients. Seven times more expensive. Now, if you're a salesperson, you might be thinking, well, the cost isn't as important to me. Think about it in effort. It takes seven times more effort to acquire a new client than it does to retain a current client. So think about serving and creating value to the greatest extent you can for your existing clients. 91% of customers or clients say they would give referrals to a sales or a business person, and yet only 11% of people ask for referrals. So what's a referral? A referral is someone saying, I get really good service from you and I'm going to put you in touch with someone else in my network that I think would also value your service. So it's one of the first places I start with clients. Who in your existing network, who in your existing customer base are you talking to about who they could refer you to? And it's such a powerful principle. This, this is really important, especially in our current remote environment. And then finally, those sales business people who actively seek out and exploit those referrals or use those referrals earn between four and five times more than those who don't. Now, if you're already doing this, I'm preaching to the choir. But if you haven't really tapped into this or you haven't done it for a while, I would urge you to revisit this. It's a really important principle that will help you drive your business much faster and with much less effort. Okay. There's a report that was published literally in the last couple of weeks from uh, Gartner, the research company, and it talked about nine future work trends post COVID-19. Now, there are nine trends. We're not going to go through them all, but we're going to pick out three that I believe will be really important to us as sales and business professionals in the future. The first is, you know, this is pretty obvious, but there's going to be an increase in remote working, right? We probably all knew that, but here it is in black and white. And what does that mean for your customer, your client? What does it mean for them, for the people they serve? So thinking about the impact on your business and your relationship. The second is their fifth principle, which is they believe there's going to be this separation of critical skills and roles. So companies are going to start to change their organizational structure between critical skills on one hand, roles on the other. So what does that mean for the client that you're talking to, the person that makes the decision in the organization that you're selling into? And what might you need to change once that starts to become a factor? And then the third piece is this increase in organizational complexity, which means it's going to be trickier to get to and identify the decision makers or people who are some way involved in deciding whether or not you get their business. So start to think about this as, it, as we move forward into a remote selling environment. Not only what does it mean for you, what does it mean for your clients? What's the impact on them and how can you help? 
Okay, now we know that there's a number of touch points it takes to engage a new customer and we're always looking to grow our business and engage with new customers. So, recent research by this company, Tangible Words, they're an inbound marketing consultancy, did a really in-depth study in how touch points have increased, the number of touch points needed to get a new customer. So, Grace, our next poll, please. What do you think is the number of touch points needed to engage a new customer. Is it just one? Is it between two and seven, which was the original AIDA principle, four or five touches, um, seven to 12, 13 to 19, 19 to 27, or 28 to 36? So, press your answer, decide which one you think it is, and we'll, um, once we've got the poll, we'll see what people think, and then I'll tell you what it really is. So, how are we doing with those answers, Grace? I'm seeing some really um, familiar faces on this call. It's, it's great to uh, see some of these people that I've not seen for a long time. Thank you for joining everybody. Really, really good. <laughs> uh, okay. So, 3% think it's just the one. I wish, I really wish that were true. I wish that were true more than you realize. 20% um, think it's between two and seven. 40% think it's between seven and 12. 23% between 13 and 19, 8% then split between 19 and 27 and 28, 36. Believe it or not, as we've entered these, this lockdown period, it has jumped to between 28 and 36. And when I say touch points, I don't mean you have to contact them 28 to 36 times. I mean, they have to have had some form of interaction with you, your organization, or your product to take action and be ready to buy between 28 and 36. So we have to find a way to get over that. So let's talk about the customer journey. What journey does your customer go through and how do you align the way you operate with that customer journey? So it starts with our funnel. Everyone's seen a traditional kind of sales funnel that goes like this. Well, that's not the reality of our world anymore. And it's not the reality of the world for a while. When you think about a sales funnel, it's not going to naturally draw people down and through it. That doesn't happen. That's not the reality. What happens is, actually, it's, a, it's an inverted funnel. And if you don't keep pulling people up, gravity acts against you. Their inertia acts against you. The competition acts against you. So actually, if you don't take people through your funnel and bring them up, draw them up through your funnel, they will continually slip back down. And what happens is a customer goes from being unaware we are even a solution or a potential opportunity for them, and we have to use models, and there's models in my business that I use, to move them from unaware to getting their attention. And getting their attention is just the first step, because they're not going to just become attentive to you and then buy. We then have to use our sales process, which we're going to go through shortly. We use our sales process. We use insight to kickstart the relationship. We then stimulate some form of interest for them. This is a natural pattern of behavior that we're following here. We then understand what their needs are. And once we understand what their needs are, we can create some form of desire. And that desire may enable us to have a conversation about a solution. What's the solution that we offer that works for the customer? After that solution, they may be prepared to take action. After they've taken action, we will then make a firmer proposal. Okay, how do we make this beyond just a single action so that they become a customer? Once they're a customer, we look at what are the immediate things we can do to serve them? How do we create more value? How do we take them beyond that to become a loyal client? And loyal clients are made and created, they're not born. And we do that through reflecting on what we're doing, reflecting on how we can create more value and be more for them. And that will enable us to take customers through this journey. So that's kind of seven, eight step journey that we're going to need to think about 28 to 30 kind of touch points to get them along this journey now because it's increased. And you will have heard in social media, in the social media world, they talk about this no like trust. People will only buy from someone they know, they like, and they trust. So we're following that model, but that is oversimplified in this day and age. We really have to think about how we take customers on a much more strategic and comprehensive journey with us. So why is it worse now? It was worse before 
uh, COVID-19, but it's worse now because there's more digital distractions than ever for everybody. You know, social media has gone mad. You look at the number of people spending time online, the time online has gone up. Emails are increased. Many people have signed up to different uh, email notifications. So they're getting an overwhelm of email that they can't keep on top of. There's just a general increase in traffic because everybody's trying to get their message out. Some people have financial concerns, you know, real financial concerns. These aren't made up, they're real financial concerns. And we've got this, I don't know if you guys, if you have, have had some time, but we are busier than ever. I haven't spoken to a single client that has said, I'm less busy now. I might not have as much business, but I have more busyness. I'm busy as, more busy than I've ever been. And there's this urgency to recover losses. And what that means for us, we've got to cut through the noise because there's so much going on in our clients or our potential clients world. We don't cut through. We're just going to be background noise amongst all of this other stuff that's going on. So let's do another poll. How have you found engaging with clients during lockdown? Now you may be, you may not have had quite so much engagement, but how have you found it? Is it no different? Has it been slightly easier, much easier, slightly harder or much harder? Let's have a look. What have we found? What have you been finding in your own businesses? Let's have a look. All eyes on Grace. <laughs> okay, wow, yes, no surprises. So 5% saying it's no different. 8%, that's a surprise actually, 8% saying slightly easier, congratulations, that's great. Um, I'd like to talk to you offline about what you're doing. And then <laughs> nobody saying it's much easier, and that makes sense, but 38% saying slightly harder, and 49% say much harder. And that is the experience of the majority of people. So, you know, don't feel like you're on your own here. It's, it's a difficult period of time. That's why we're here, right? Okay, so think about it now. What could we start to do about this situation? There are three things your clients may be overlooking right now. The first is taking care of themselves, okay? We're all wrapped up in everything else that's going on, the post-COVID world, how we're gonna sort our business out, what's happening with our teams, all this stuff. And very often, the first thing that goes is us. We forget about ourselves. So they might be feeling drained. They might be feeling worried. They might be feeling overwhelmed. Start to think, as you're re-engaging with them, what can you do to help? What can you do to help them on a personal level? Even if it's just a conversation. Secondly, fundamentals. When people get stressed and they feel drained, worried, and overwhelmed, they forget to practice the fundamentals, engaging their own clients or patients, making sure that they've got guidance in place, making sure that instructions are clear, especially in the new world. They forget about helping their teams. They forget about tools and resources that you might be able to offer that help them to get back to the fundamentals of their own business. So don't overlook how powerful that can be for you and for engaging your clients. And thirdly, one of, the, one of the very early things to go is maintaining connections, communicating, getting support and providing support. Because when you provide support, it's one of the, it's one of the best ways to stay on track, provide support for other people because through that process, you naturally recognize the support you need for yourself and the strength of a network and their personal growth. So th these will be areas, there'll be, there'll be something in here that your existing clients, every one of your existing clients is currently overlooking. So think about how you might be able to bring that up as an opportunity to help. The other thing that's important, and many of you will know this, is the power of the peer. So when we talk about what other people are doing, we talk about other customers, other businesses, other clients, getting value from what we offer. It's really powerful way of saying to somebody, here's what can happen, rather than saying, I'd like to do this, or I've got this for you. Talking about other customers getting value. And it does a few things. It gives you external, gives them, sorry, external validation, and it creates external authority for your position. And then three things happen to your customer if you get this right, if you can position it in a way that is external peers, 
of theirs getting your support. The first thing is they get curious. So they start to think, well, if, if someone else is getting value, I wonder what's in it for me. The second thing is it gives them reassurance. Well, if someone else is doing that, perhaps I would get benefit from doing that. And then the third thing that happens is they get this fear of missing out. They get FOMO, you know, oh, well, if, uh, hold on a minute. If other businesses are deploying these models, are thinking like this and I don't, what happens to me post COVID? So think about how you can utilize that, not in a manipulative way, but in a way that adds value for your customer and helps them to see that you are the one trying to avoid these issues for. So how do you engage your clients? Now you might've been in a business, you may be in a business where it's been really straightforward up until now. You ask for a meeting, you get it, or you walk through the door and you're seen, but it's perhaps not quite as easy in this new environment. You perhaps can't walk through the door. That's why we're remote selling, right? So engaging your client with some form of hook, is more important now than ever. So how do you do it? Here's what we do. The first thing you do is you begin with the end in mind. You don't think about what you'll cover in the meeting. You think about the outcome. What's the outcome of your meeting? After somebody has spent time with you, what will they have gained? You know, right at the start of this webinar, we talked about the outcome. What will you get by the end of it? So you've got to do the same for your client interactions. What will they get at the end of time with me? Why should they trade their time? Because right now, that's how everybody sees it. Time is not infinite. It is a finite resource. And if I spend time with you, like you guys have spent time here with me, what you're trading this for something else. There's something else you can't do. So if a client's going to see you, they're trading their time to spend that time with you. Make it worthwhile. How are you going to make that worthwhile? What will make them think? This is important, I must see Justin, or I must see you know, Adrian, Mark, Cheryl. What can you share that has real value? If you don't get this into your thinking up front, then you're gonna be the one that's, that's probably bumped. Because it's very easy to just say, oh, I haven't got time, or even at the last minute, I was gonna see you, but now something else has come up. They have to have that in advance. And as you start to plan this interaction with clients, here's something that's really important to remember. You can email people. Okay? You can email or direct message people, but a call is better than an email. So if you can pick up the phone, if you can find a way for them to speak to you, it's better than email. The same way that a call is good, right? But a video call or an option for them to see your face is better than just speaking to them. And then finally, we know that video call is at the moment our best option, but actually getting out there, getting face to face with people, shaking hands, being able to interact physically is optimal. It isn't possible in all situations at the moment. But think about this hierarchy. Don't just send an email. Don't just make a call. If you can get people on a video call, make sure you get them on the video call and we'll talk about why that's important. So thinking about your current sales process, the things you're learning now, the things that you're experiencing. Grace, next poll, please. What's your biggest challenge? Well, that was quick, thank you. What's your biggest challenge in your own sales process in your business today? Is it getting the client to meet you in the first place? Is it preparing for the meeting? Is it questioning and listening? Is it presenting your proposition or solution? Is it managing the remote sale? Is it handling objective? handling objections or is it maintaining client momentum so you've had a meeting you want to maintain momentum which of those is it for you and then we'll look because i'll make sure that we cover each of these components but we'll look at which is causing us the biggest headache right now and look to address it whether it's now or throughout the questioning okay suspense is killing me i can't wait Okay, interesting. So one, one is maintaining client momentum after a meeting. That's our biggest challenge at 38%. Next is getting the client to meet with me at 28%. Okay, thank you. Then we've got managing remote selling. Good, we're going to cover, we're definitely covering all three of those key topics. Then we've got presenting my propositional solution, preparing for the client meeting and handling objections. Okay, we're going to look at the majority of those, but perhaps not all of them today. So thank you, everybody. That's, that's great. 
Okay, so talking about pre preparation, we're going to cover preparation very quickly. So in, in this current environment, if you don't prepare for your meetings, it's going to be more difficult for you to engage your customers. It's going to be more difficult to manage it. So it's not just the will to win, as we've heard in the past, that matters, because nowadays everybody has it. Everybody's going to be the next millionaire. It's the will to prepare to win that really matters. And I teach this really simple framework. If you're going into a client meeting, it's a strategic meeting, you want to get it right, there are four factors to consider. There's your client and what's going on for them internally, and there's your client and what's going on for them externally. Then there is you and what happens internally for you, and there's you and what happens externally for you. So here's how it works. When it, when it comes to your client, you think about the company or professional information about them. So you do a bit of research on them. Then you look at the market, what's happening broader, what's happening externally for them. Then you go to thinking about yourself, managing yourself, your process, the principles, the resources, the tools, the assets you might use. And then finally, you think about external validation. How do I, how do I present something to my client in a way that isn't me saying I'm great and my company does X, Y, and Z? It's an external validation a testimonial, referrals, results from other people, makes such a difference when you can think in these four sections. So before you prepare to go back out to your clients, just take some time, draw four boxes, put four or five key points in each of these boxes, and then start to use that in your approach going forward. It will really help get clarity over the message you take to your clients. The other thing to consider is your clients, you know this already, right? You know this, your clients are people. They're not organizations, they are people. Think about it, what have they done? Have they updated their website with some information for their own clients or patients? What have they been saying on social media? What posts are they putting up? What are they liking? What are they commenting on? What are they sharing? And has their behavior changed over the last three or four months? Are they doing more online or less online? And just noticing that and talking to your client about it. I notice you're doing more in online. I noticed that you seem to have an interest in this area. You're creating the common ground you need to really connect with them more deeply as you start to re-engage. So that's preparation. Now, when we think about process, I'm going to very quickly walk you through a sales process that will be useful for you. And this guy was the godfather of automotive manufacturing. He was an absolute genius when it came to process. William, William Edwards Deming, he said, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. And he took it from automotive manufacturing to pretty much every area of business. And in a way, he's right. If we can't describe what we're doing as a process, we can't reproduce those results. So even if it's really simple, we should always understand what it is we're doing. So let me give you an example of an option for you in the sales process. This is the Inspire sales system. We start with the relationship with the client. We're going to talk about rapport shortly. But it starts with what we, the I of it Inspire. So it's a mnemonic. The I is insight and impact. So we've already started to talk about that. What's going on for your client? What's happening in their world? What's happening in the market? How do I create something that is really useful information? And I use that insight to deliver it to the client with impact. So it creates a positive impact for them. Now, when you do that, it kickstarts your sales process. And the next step of your sales process is not to then start talking about how great you are. Very often a trap that we've, we fall into, I've done it myself. But the next part is really important, needs discovery with questions and listening. Then, then you talk about your solution, but you do it in a way that's a discussion because nobody likes to be pitched at, right? Unless they attend a webinar. But other than that, they're looking for a discussion. They're looking for a discussion about how you can offer a solution. Once you've done that, we go to a proposal. So we make a proposal, but we get agreement on it. This isn't forcing anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. It's about gaining agreement. Then we look at the immediate actions we take. What are the things that has to happen for that order to be processed for us to take the next step with a client? Because so often, if we don't get really clear on that immediate follow-up, there's a term I love, which is that enthusiasm has a half-life. People get really whipped up in the moment and then you walk out the door, they see you know, the next client or the person coming to them or a patient if they're in healthcare. And before you know it, you know, 10 minutes has gone by and you're a distant memory. So you have to get this immediate action and gain commitment. 
And then what I teach is that we reflect at that point. And this is about how do we get better and better? What went well? What did we learn? What should we change as we go forward? And the model and the cycle then continues. But today we're going to look at three areas. We're going to look at rapport and how we do that online. We're going to look at insight and impact. And we're going to look at needs discovery. Because these are the three parts of the process that will really kickstart your sales right now when you need it. So we know what rapport is, but what is rapport? Rapport is the ability to relate to others in a way that creates a level of trust and understanding, and it's the foundation for a positive relationship, right? So they're the words, we know that. But what it really means is that we won't buy from people we don't like. So we have to be likable. Rapport is likability. And what's really important with rapport is that in sales interactions, what it enables is you as a salesperson with your client to unconsciously gain agreement and acceptance. And I'm going to come back to that word unconsciously shortly. But it's critical for engagement, influence, commitment, challenge. Sometimes you need to challenge our customers, right? If we're in a negotiation, we might need to challenge them. And it's also critical for high performance. And if you think about yourselves, if you're, you know, those of you who are in leadership positions, your teams don't perform for a leader that they don't like. They won't give their best efforts for somebody they don't like or respect because rapport is a fundamental part of that. So let's think about how we communicate. This, you may have seen this model. If you haven't, this will help. Back in uh, the early 1900s, Dr. Albert Moravian ran a study about personal communication, how we interpret and receive communication. And what he found was fascinating, that 7% of what we receive in communication is the spoken word. 38% of what we receive is the voice, the tone, and the way that spoken word is delivered. And then a whole 55% is body language. So start to think about what this means. This is why having people on video is so important, because otherwise you're missing over half of what you deliver, right? And the 7% spoken words is conscious, and the, the remaining 93% is unconscious. What does that mean? We don't think about it. We feel it. It's intuitive. So if you're not thinking about the way you deliver the word, if you're not passionate about what you do, if you're not giving the opportunity to see you in action, then you're missing out on this huge unconscious connection for your client. Really, really important that we get this. So there's three things you can do to accelerate rapport. The first is fairly obvious. Smile, be warm and be sincere. Because when you're sincere and authentic, the 93% of that floods out to the customer without you even having to tell them you're being sincere. The second is to listen and be interested in them and be curious. So be a bit curious about what's happening. Keep digging, keep digging. Don't just, don't just kind of say, how are you doing and move on. Ask, listen, be more curious. And then finally, there's this principle in uh, rapport and NLP, which is match pace lead which means when we start with a relationship with someone we match their body language we match their pace their tone then we go up to their pace and from there once we're in a position where we are moving things forward we can start to lead and next time you're in a group of people or you're with somebody that you're close with notice that unconsciously you'll start to match and mirror each other's body language and then you can play with it you can start to move and they'll move you can adjust your position they'll adjust it you can change your hand gestures and they'll follow you it's out it's like magic this stuff works and then you'll know that you've got clients in a positive rapport state with you okay this is another thing i heard this this week it really um made me think actually sometimes and this is so think about this i heard this from a client Sometimes we say we're fine. So you say, how are you? They say we're fine and we move on, right? And we're not. There's all sorts going on. We might see this big smiley, well, pretend smile face, but actually there's something deeper. The way to overcome it is to simply ask twice. So how are you? And if someone says, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Yeah, I'm fine. No, how are you? And you know, I've done that a few times this week and it's amazing. It really, really connects you with somebody so much more than if you just move on so really another really simple tip ask twice just ask twice okay so now we're going to look at insight and impact i'm going to keep moving at pace i hope this pace is all right for you all. i'm going to keep moving at pace so we get everything covered 
So insight and impact, why do we do it? We do it because in a crowded marketplace, and it's more crowded now than ever, if you fit in with everybody else, that is failure, right? In a busy marketplace, you don't stand out. It's the same as being invisible. We've got to do something that makes us step up, stand out amongst our competition. So this is how I recommend people do it. We do it through insight and impact. So you're sharing insight with your clients about whatever it is that you know is going to be interesting to them. The marketplace, trends, some business intelligence, some guidance or updating regulations. Um, and that's going to be a real sweet spot at the moment. Or a hidden opportunity or threat. In particular, the opportunity. What could your clients be looking at right now that they've overlooked? It's hidden from them because sometimes we're so close to what's going on in our own business, in our own worlds, it takes someone else to say to us, have you even thought about this? That has huge value to a client. So when you deliver this to a client, when you give them something of this value, it unconsciously, remember the 93%, it unconsciously does a number of things. It establishes your credibility and you might, you might already have had it, but it further establishes your credibility. It gets their interest it creates value and it demonstrates this positive intent and it can act as a favor or a gift. So people feel then like they need to reciprocate, right? So this is a kickstarting of the sales process. Here's something that I've pulled together in the past and I share this with clients that, and these are real stats from Harvard Business Review, that 44% of companies will actually say they have an ineffective sales pipeline and process management. So they're not really managing pipeline or process. And then companies that said they, they do manage it effectively and that they, have, they follow three key steps show 28% higher revenue growth than those that didn't. And here's the three things they were doing. They were following a defined sales process alongside a customer journey, the stuff we talked about right at the start. They were training sales leaders on how to manage pipeline and process. And then they were investing time on it they said three hours a month, that's 45 minutes a week. So for 45 minutes a week of just going through your pipeline, going through your process, making sure that you are absolutely on it, delivers a 28% increase versus people that don't. And you'd say, well, do you know, that's quite obvious, really. But 28% is a big swing. That's a huge shift. And so this is one of the things that I share with clients, whether they work with me or not, to say, you know, just work on this area. And this is where you're going to see some real benefits. So I'd ask you to think about it. What's, what does this mean for you? What's in your world? How will you create some insight, deliver that with impact to your clients and kickstart your sales process? If there are other people in your organization that you should be talking to about this, have the conversation. What should we talk about? What should we use? Because this will really make a difference to how you kickstart. Now, once you've kickstarted the sales process, I've talked about it before, the next step is needs discovery. So if you deliver something of, of value and impact to your customer, don't then start talking about all the products that you sell and all the solutions that you can offer and all the great work you can do, because that's not going to land. Then all of a sudden it looks like you just gave me that so that you could sell something to me, right? And whilst that may be our intention, we don't do it. We might have got them engaged. What we need to do now is needs discovery. So don't jump into pitching. This is really, really common error. I did this for years before I learned <laughs> a proper sales process. And you can only discover needs by questioning and listening, questioning and listening. But you've got to ask the right questions, right? And you've got to train yourself to listen. And listening is a skill that none of us are born with. We are born with a skill that enables us to talk, but listening is something we have to cultivate. You're all doing really well at the moment. You're all listening, so that's good. So you're, you've obviously cultivated it. But listening one-to-one -one is really important. If you haven't, if this is an area where you need to focus in on, just spend some time on it. But needs discovery. This is about questioning first and foremost. So here's, here's a really important lesson that I learned a few years ago, but I, I come back to and I come back to. There are three types of questions, right? And you have to know the difference. There are open questions that get people talking. There are closed questions that can only be answered yes or no. And then there are probing questions. So what's a probing question? A probing question is a question where you've had an answer to your open question, but you have to go deeper because you haven't quite got what you needed. So you just probe on that one area. You don't move on. 
It's a mistake that is very easy to make. Someone gives you an answer that you kind of think, well, I get that, but it isn't really what I asked. Rather than moving on, you probe. And it may be as simple as saying, well, what else? Or tell me more. But knowing those three types of questions is really important. The most important are the open questions. And what I recognize is, you know, there are six or seven different types of open questions. What, how, where, when, why, who. But actually, there's only really two you need to remember. And those two are what and how. So when you're in a situation where you think, right, I need to get this person talking, what's the best question? That's a great question to ask yourself, by the way. What's the best question? Then if you say the words what or how, it will get you to finish that question and it will naturally be open. And this is something I've practiced for years. I just have implanted what or how. So I'll start with, so what is the best way for us to continue? Or what are you thinking about right now? Or what's really important to you? Or how are you going to make a decision on this? Or how can I help in the best way possible? Whatever it is for you, what or how will get people talking in a way that no other question will. And very often when I'm running sessions like this, people say, well, what about why? Why is really powerful. You know, we talk about finding our why. And it's absolutely true. But the problem with why is that it triggers an emotional response in almost all of us. Because for so many years, we were asked why in a negative way, whether that be by parents, teachers, or adult role models that say, why did you do that? So we don't even realize it, but it triggers us. So there is a way to use why that works. And the way to use why that works is when you use it in reverse. So if you ask somebody, for example, you're in a position where you're confident it's moving and you say to somebody, well, why would you choose to leave your current supplier and, and work with me? They will jump to your defense. So you've used why in a way that in, enables them to side with you. If you'd asked it the other way around, you would have got the reverse effect. And it's really important to get this. So what or how for open questions, why only in reverse? Okay, so that's really simple to remember. I hope that, that is a game changer for you if you can get it right. Okay, keep an eye on the clock. We're okay, we're good for time. So only after you understand your client's needs should you then discuss your service or solution. Because when you're in that situation, you now know what they need, you know what they're worried about, you know what they're trying to achieve. Now you can do this great job of matching stuff up. You told me that this is what you were looking for. And here's something that I have that matches what you're looking for. Does that sound like a fit? And all of a sudden it makes it seamless. And if you haven't been using that approach, honestly, that in itself makes such a difference for you and for your clients. It feels like a fit. And you can just link, you can just link the two things by saying, you know, you told me you needed this. And actually what I offer is this, which means that you will get what you were looking for. So which means that can just really simply connect the dots for your customer. And it's another thing I learned years ago. We make the assumption that if we say to somebody, well, our product does this, and they've already told us something, we assume they're gonna jump between, ah, I told Justin that I wanted that, his product does that, ah, it's a fit. We have to spell it out because people don't always do that connecting themselves. So it's a really simple way to do it, which means that. Okay, so now I've got, here's specifically, I'll, I'll, as I say, I'll be sharing this presentation afterwards. 10 things that you should be considering as you move to virtual or remote selling. The first is, is what we're doing today. Remember to follow a proven sales process. Don't just throw your sales process out the water or out of the room because you're now in a virtual meeting. Use your sales process. Prime yourself and your client first. Okay, and, and I've got a reminder at the bottom there, but we've been through our process. We talked about this as well. Ensure your reason why for your customer, not your reason why, not why you want to meet with them, because they're not interested in that. The reason why for them, your hook is really powerful. Because even if you do get them on a call, if, or commit to a call, if you haven't got this bit in place, you will risk cancellation. It happens over and over again. I can't repeat this enough. And even when you have got it, make sure they know what it is. Almost get them to recognize it for themselves. 
And the best way to do that is to send an agenda and an invitation, a meeting invitation, even if it's just 15 minute catch up with somebody, put it in the diary, send it as an electronic meeting invitation, and then you can put your video conference meeting link in that video, uh, sorry, in that invitation, and make sure that whatever reason you've told them you're meeting for is the header. Don't then just put catch up with Justin. Put in the header exactly what you've said you're going to do for them. And once you've confirmed, you can then send that, and, and the day before you can send a reminder just by clicking on it and, and sending a meeting or, or a note to that meeting uh, attendee. Remember we talked earlier, video call is better than phone. And one of the things that I hear from people is, oh, well, I was on the call, they didn't turn their camera on, so I didn't either. Don't do that, don't, don't fall for that. What you need to do is put your camera on anyway. Even if they don't have theirs on, put yours on. Because then you can talk to them, you can build this rapport, you can use the 93% of your unconscious communication mix. Make sure that, and this is kind of basic stuff, but turn off all notifications, practice using the platform before, maybe get on a call with, your, with a friend or a family member or a colleague or a peer. Just make sure that you can do it all. Turn your phone on silent, do all that stuff that you know could trip you up in a meeting invitation. Okay, turn the doorbell off if you need to. All the stuff that you know is gonna help you get confident and prepared. Okay, six, get in early. Get in early to the meeting. So if your meeting's at you know, 10 o'clock, be in at five or 10 too. And remember that your customer, your client is coming to you. So if, if you normally go to them on a virtual meeting, for them it will feel like they've come to you. So it's really important that you recognize that and that you control the setting. So not only are you in there early, but you welcome them. You restate the agenda. You say, by the end of it, I'd like to do this. And you are the driver of the meeting. Because if you don't, it feels like a really bad experience for them and you won't get what you need. Seven, you, you may notice this throughout the webinar. I have a video cam here. My slides are there and you guys are over here, but I continually return to the camera. And I've had to train myself to do this. You'll notice that for most people, they're here because they're looking at the screen. You need to look at the camera because looking at the camera makes eye contact. So that's really simple, but such a powerful difference. If you do that, you will really connect deeply with your client, especially in situations where they're thinking or they're talking and you're looking at the camera. It's like being in person with you, but it's a huge differentiator. Eight. We talked about this in the model, start with rapport, get them engaged, get them interested, get their kind of juices flowing before you start selling. And it may be as simple as the two questions, you know, how are you? How are you really? You know, use that opportunity to build rapport. So important to set that as a background to your sales process. And then remember to listen carefully because when you're on video, you will have noticed this I'm sure, but sometimes there's a lag. And if you're not listening and creating some space, then you end up tripping over the other person. So knowing that in advance, listen really carefully. We've talked about looking at the camera. Listen deeply as you look at the camera and create some space. So maybe think to yourself, I'm gonna allow one or two seconds in between them finishing and me speaking. And if you do that, you'll stop this constant tripping up that, that people seem to find a problem in, in video remote selling. So just prepare in advance and get yourself ready to do that. And then finally, you know, we had quite a few people saying that getting commitment and following up was one of the challenges. At the end of that conversation, make sure you summarize what's been said. You summarize the actions and you confirm the actions and say to your customer, have I got everything? Are you okay with this? Are we okay to pursue this, proceed? And you'll notice my questions are closed at that point. I'm not interested in opening it up to a long conversation now. We're confirming, have I got everything? Are you okay if we proceed? And I'm just gonna check that this is what we're going to do. Is that okay? These are the next steps. You're in control, this is your sales process. If you can get the next steps confirmed and agreed in that meeting, that's the time to keep control of your future sales process, not a week down the line when you can't get the customer to return your call. Get it all agreed there and then. That's the key to maintaining that momentum in the process. So here's the 10. You'll get this as a, as a document already so that you can refer back to it. 
Final piece here is about controlling the sail and keeping your hands on the wheel. Here's an analogy that I think works really well. If you think about your sales process and the people in your sales process as being two seat, front seats of the car, there's you and there's the client, okay? At any point, only one person can have their hands on the wheel. And if at any point during your process, you haven't booked the next step or you haven't been really clear over the actions that you're both gonna take by when and then book it, then you've just handed the wheel over to your client. And then you're a passenger in the sales process. And if you can get this firmly fixed in your mind, have I got my hands on the wheel of every client and customer conversation and every sales process I'm in? And if you haven't, it's time to regain the wheel and keep hold of it. And this isn't a controlling thing. This is about making sure that you get the progress you need for you and for your client. Okay. So we are... 10 2, wow. Please tell us what you're going to do next. Here's our last poll of the, of the webinar. What will you do next? I'll apply some of the principles I'll learned, I've learned. I'll share this with other people in my organization. I will consider what I've learned. I will get help to apply this or I'm not sure yet. What do we think? So just click your, uh, click your choice, press submit. Let's see what we, let's see what we come up with. I'm hoping there's, uh, there's one in there I hope uh, we don't get any answers to, <laughs> but we'll see. We're eagerly awaiting it. Here it is, right. Okay, good, thank you. 68% I'll apply some of the principles I've learned, excellent. 20% I'll share this with other people in my organization and 15% I'll get help to apply this, perfect. Perfect. And if I can help, please feel free to reach out. I'm delighted. Nobody's saying they're considering it and nobody's not sure. Fabulous. I, ex I would expect no less of this audience. Thank you all very much. That's great. Okay, so here's a couple of things I would like to share with you with your permission. If you'd like to go faster and further, there are a couple of options. I'll, I do a lot of private consulting and coaching, but other than that, there's a couple of options. So I'll share those with your permission. Yeah, everybody's nodding. Thank you. I'm imagining you nodding. <laughs> Okay, the first is that I've developed um, during lockdown, I've been working on an online sales mastery program. So I do three and four day events with customers and large business teams. And I've pulled that into an online program. It's 28 core modules and a total of 38 modules. Yes, it's been an absolute marathon, but it's, a, it's my best content online. So what is it? 12 month program subscription. So you get 12 months access to the program. You get 12 monthly live Zoom, live Zoom mastermind groups. Now I'm not gonna do this for everybody that enrolls, but the first 100 people will get access to that group. I'm gonna do a daily, it launches 1st of July by the way, so we're not live yet. I'm gonna do a daily email video accountability series. So I've recorded a series of videos that will receive in your inbox each day to keep you on track and move you forward. You'll get an invitation to a private Facebook group, which will include a weekly live. I'll invite you to a private WhatsApp group, which uh, I think we have a maximum of about 200 people. And I've got an ebook that I've written. Believe it or not, I've written a book. And uh, you can have that as well. And I, I reckon it's probably about three and a half. I was going to charge this to an organization. So this is three and a half thousand pounds worth of value per person. The program is 495. You can do a couple of things. You can either check it out which is the link there on the bottom right. This will be in the presentation you get. Or if you're interested and you wanna have a conversation, click yes in the chat, drop your email behind it and I'll make contact and we'll have a conversation. But it's 495 plus VAT. Obviously that's a, bit, that's a business expense. So those of you in business, you can write that off against your um, this year's profits. So that's one option. Second option, I'm doing a one day sales intensive workshop with this lady called Natalie Sabrina Dahl from Switzerland. She's an absolute, pocket rocket this lady she is incredible she's a master sales trainer trained with Blair Singer and I've been doing some work with her she's absolutely knockout and on Wednesday the 16th of September she and I are going to run a one-day session on zoom for we, we haven't capped it yet but we think probably 40 people is the max we'll be doing models action and breakthroughs so this is about breaking through some of the beliefs we have about selling breaking through some of the challenges we have with clients We've got access to breakout rooms, accountability groups, live client calls. So she gets people calling clients while we're in the sessions, trying out some of the models. It's really good fun. So if you're interested in that, type me in the chat with your email and I'll, I'll make sure that you get some more details. 
and there's an early bird pricing before we go live. This is the first time anybody's seen this. We're literally booking it this week, uh, 295x VAT per delegate. So if either of those interests of interest to you, let me know and I'll gladly have a conversation with you. I've got some stuff here about clients that you can review at your leisure. And I've also got some of the people I work with, which may or may not be of interest to you. And I would love to do a webcam gallery view photo now. So if all of you who aren't on camera wouldn't mind putting your webcams on. Ah, oh, thank you. I've already started to see some people coming on. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to just tee mine up. Oh, yes, brilliant. Thank you. Let me just... So I'm going to give you a count to three so you get a chance to smile. And if anybody... You know, I see some people are closing blinds to make sure the light's right. Just going to give you a second. <laughs> you all look absolutely wonderful, by the way. So three, two... One. Oh, fantastic. Wow, what a beautiful bunch. You are absolutely stunning. Thank you all very much. Right, okay. So we are at 5-2. We've got five minutes for questions. Sorry, I was hoping we'd have a bit longer, but hopefully you don't mind. So Grace is going to be sending me in the chat some questions. I've just got to find it. <laughs> right, okay, more chat here we go three okay uh okay i i can see how many people are. yeah okay good i declined a meeting with my manager this morning so i could attend this webinar mia oh i'm so excited brilliant webinar thank you justin great oh mia thank you very much um no questions from anybody excellent that means i answered everything you possibly could have asked right ah lee lee chan Lee, you've, broke, you've broken our state. Thank you, Lee. What's your view on a tire? Good question, Lee. So I'll tell you a story. I went, when I was um, at 3M, I was managing an IT accessories business and I went for a strategic meeting with Apple UK. And I went to London and I was in Covent Garden and the door to Apple uh, is behind the Apple store in Covent Garden. And it's this tiny little alleyway. You would never know it was Apple's headquarters. It's all fully automated and I went in a suit. I thought I looked brilliant. And everybody in the building was in shorts, flip-flops, and T-shirts. <laughs> and I had this meeting in a business suit with all these people in shorts, T-shirts, and flip-flops. What I would say to that question, Lee, is match your client. Whatever your client's business attire is, match the client. Because I have clients I work with who are suited and booted. That's fine, you know, and, and I have clients who I mean, as a client, I'm going to tomorrow to run a session and they will all be in shorts, T-shirts and flip-flops. And so will I, because that's how they work. They, they work in, a, in that sort of environment. They're quite a modern company. So uh, that, I hope that answers your question. Whatever it is your client does, match your client. Okay, thanks, Lee. Kate, how would you encourage a video meeting over a phone call? Guessing they may be as reluctant as me. So I would say, Kate... Um, you could even offer them to teach them a few tricks on camera. So I'll, I'll teach you a few principles that might be useful for you on video and think about it from their point of view. They might be engaging with clients. So you could teach them the importance of getting used to being on camera. So that's how I do it in a way that shows a benefit for them to doing it, not kind of says, oh, would you like to get on camera? Think about how you can use it for their benefit. Um, two minutes to go. What's your view on using tactical empathy? Yes. You should. <laughs> I think it's great. Tactical empathy. Yeah, absolutely. you should definitely meet your customer where they are. You should definitely empathize with them. You should definitely show that you understand. And, you know, if you do this enough, it, it goes beyond tactical empathy. It becomes real empathy, right? That's where we get to. Okay. Uh, Abdullah, I found emailing telling the client that you're going to call. Then calling gave better results. What are your thoughts on this versus cold calling? Absolutely. Yes, agreed. So giving people notification that you're going to call, getting their permission to call, is something that, um, that Natalie has taught me. And this is uh, on social media and on direct messages. Really simple principle. Short statement, one single question. Short statement, one single question. The response rate increase is phenomenal. If you just say, you know, Here's a statement that may be about, you know, how you find, you know, what, what's happening in the current environment. There's a couple of things going on. How is it for you? One question, really simple, punchy question, really powerful in getting people to engage. And then you can go to a call. So I would say, think about it as a, as a kind of game of tag. 
tagging people, and then you get to a call. Um, okay, uh, uh, Tim, I'll be speaking, I'll be breaking my piggy bank to sign up. For, thank you, Tim. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Lee, thank you. So we remember the news reader who had the kids running around in the background. I'm no longer precious when it comes. Brilliant. Lovely. Thank you. Guys, I think we've covered everything. Uh, should you record any video meetings with approval? Miss this one for Paul. Ah, yes. Should you record any video meetings? Only if you get approval. I sometimes will, re will record a client session, but I'll absolutely get their approval. So yes, if you can record it, it can be really powerful for people to play back as well. Guys, we are at one minute to 11. We are finishing now. I'd just like to say thank you all so much for dialing in and for the questions and the engagement. For those of you who have typed into the comments, I'll be in touch. I'll follow up with the extra slide deck and the recording of the video for you to watch as well. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the weekend when you get there and I'll see you all soon. Thank you all very much again. Take care. Thanks everyone. See you soon.